like a shark in a shrimp tank. Big fish, small pond in the shrimp tank. When it take a swim, only option is to win. Welcome to the post show wrap up of the shrimp tank. I'm Brad Berger, along with my esteemed co host Dan Whedon. Our guest today is Nick Johnson, the creative director at Libro.fm and owner of SEMA Creative. We just had a fantastic conversation with Nick, and to listen to our entire podcast, visit our website, seattle.shrimptank.podcast.com, or subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. As always, we're always interested in your feedback, so don't forget to rate us. We want to thank uh, thank Nick for joining us, and we had a fantastic conversation. So, Nick, I want to start off with the fact that you know you had an incredibly successful career. We're on track with a, a major firm in Seattle to uh, be a partner, and then you made the jump. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. My um, the company I was with it was a great company. I've been there about nine years or so. I was on partner track. Um, we were having discussions about what that would look like, when that would happen, and it was moving in the right direction. But I was really finding that my work-life balance was getting out of whack. I was spending a lot too much, um, sorry, way too much time commuting, about three and a half hours a day, and my kids were getting older, and I was kind of starting to lose some things. Um, and it just didn't feel like the right company anymore. I knew if I became partner, I'd be even more involved with the company. It's going to take up even more time, and it just wasn't what I saw in my life. Uh, where I saw my life going. So yeah, I uh, I decided to leave. I didn't initially go on, want to go out on my own. It was more just find a different firm that was a little closer to home. But after getting some great feedback from some business coaches and mentors and whatnot, they kind of gave me the, the push I needed to, to make that jump. So you, you, you took a dip into the tank, into the shrimp tank. I, I took a dip <laughs> into the shrimp tank, yes. And, and now, though, you're, you're reinventing yourself again with Libro.fm. Can you talk a little bit about this reinvention and then a little bit about what Libro.fm is? Yeah, I actually I started Libro with a couple friends of mine from college not that long after I started SEMA Creative. And... Um, Libro was kind of more of a passion project where SEMA I knew would uh, successfully, it would make money pretty clearly, where Libro had potential for it, but I wasn't quite sure if it would or not. As time has kind of progressed, Libro has gotten more and more um, of my time, and it's been more and more successful, so I'm actually kind of ramping SEMA Creative down. Um, what, why I'm putting so much effort into Libro is, first of all, I see that it has a lot of potential for success. But also, I really like what it does in the world. Basically, what Libro.fm is, is we are giving independent bookstores around the country the ability to sell digital audiobooks. This way, they can now compete with the larger companies out there, the Amazons and, and Audibles and whatnot, and allow customers who want to listen to digital audiobooks to support their local independent business at the same time. You know, Nick, I think you're in a pretty enviable position because there's a lot of individuals, uh, both that have been on the show and have talked about their struggles and their ultimate uh, uh, accomplishments that they were able to overcome all those challenges, and 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 uh, individuals who would listen to the podcast who are thinking, you know, how do I make that jump? And here you are in a situation where you've got uh, kind of the best of both worlds and some choices to make. Talk us a little bit through the thought process associated with the fact that you've got two successful businesses, um, the balancing that requires, and kind of the business decisions that go along with what do I do next? Yeah, I, I've been very, very lucky. When I started SEMA Creative, I was actually profitable from day one. I had clients waiting to work with me, and um, in the four years that it's been in business, I haven't had to do any marketing. It's all been word of mouth, and um, I've been very, very blessed in that respect. Um, but one of the issues with SEMA Creative is it's really based on me and my time and the amount of hours I can put in. If I want to grow the business larger, I'm going to need to bring on additional staff, um, which I'm going to lose some of the freedom that I currently have, freedom to be able to work from where I want and when I want and so on and so forth. Um, I like having that freedom because it allows me to basically see my family more. I could take a random day off here or there without asking permission and, and chaperone a field trip or something along those lines. Um, so there's there's a lot of freedom that comes with how I'm keeping SEMA structured and financially it's been as, as good as I could have hoped for. Uh, but there is a ceiling to it. There's sure. a ceiling to the size that it can, it can go. Where with Libro, Libro is much more scalable. If we get Libro working for 
a thousand people, it works for ten thousand, it sure. works for a million, it works for ten million, with minimal additional time and effort on my part. So Libro, I just see a lot more potential in terms of what it could turn into, which is kind of why I'm shifting my focus to it. It's been a big challenge though, trying to scale one down and scale the other sure. up and do that in balance. It's it's very, very tough. So Nick, if people want to get in touch with you, uh, how would they best learn more about you and get in touch with you? Yeah, the best way, um, you can go to SEMACreative.com, but also Libro.fm, where you can learn more about the digital audiobook business. Um, and then if you just go to the contact there, you'll get in touch with me or one of my friends, and they'll put you in touch with me. Um, but yeah, check it out there, learn about what we're doing, and support your local store. Good. You can download your Libro app, oh, right? App, yeah. yeah, we have a free app for uh, Apple and Android, so when you buy a book through us, um, the app is free and it shows up immediately. Whatever book you bought shows up immediately and it's, it's fantastic. So check it out. Uh, search Libra.fm in the app store and you'll find us. Great. Well, Dan, thank you so much uh, for co-hosting. It's always, a, it's always a blast. And Nick, thank you so much for coming in and, and joining us today. You know, what you just heard is just a small snippet of what you can uh, experience by listening to the entire podcast. So we want you to go and listen to the entire show. You can do that by visiting our website. That's seattle.shrimptankpodcast.com. Of course, you can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. And we are always interested in your feedback. So we want to make sure as you subscribe, and as you listen, that you don't forget to rate us. So until next time, we'll be signing off. This is uh, Brad Berger along with uh, Dan Whedon, and we'll see you next time on The Shrimp Tank. I've been feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank.